Disclaimer. All credit for the following pictures and information can be found in the description below. Welcome back, trainers, to Pokemon New Zealand, where a world of adventure awaits you. Last we left off, we were separated by Koopa and James in order to start our adventure. We head over to Route 2, which will take us to the west coast of South Island. Route 2 will be based on the Waimakuriri district of the Canterbury region. Originally a wetland, this district is now known as a farmer's region and for its farmer's market. As such, the types of trainers you would find here are ranchers, cowgirls, and even some youngsters. During the day, you'll find Pokemon such as the weasel, the bellbird, and the skink. Bellbirds are known for their beautiful song and will be the Pidgey of our region. It will ultimately evolve into a Tui, which do not share a similar ancestry, but do share a similar bird song. Skinks are commonly seen throughout New Zealand and are known to be avid baskers of the sun. Its desire to stay close to the ground while absorbing heat gives it the ground typing. At night, you'll find more Hyore and the Pidgey of the night, the Kiwi. Kiwis are the national treasures of New Zealand and have strong culture cultural and historical influences for the Maori, hence it gets the fairy and flying typing. After making it to the west coast of South Island, we head towards Greymouth. Greymouth has a history of gold mining, and our Pokemon version of Greymouth will be based on Shantytown, a heritage park recreated as a 1900s pioneer town based on the gold rush. Greymouth is the first place where you will get your gym badge, which will be based on a Rustboro gym. The player will have to navigate their way around a maze like mine, defeat two worker trainers, and make their way towards the end of the mine to meet the gym leader, Rongo. Rongo is known as the god of cultivated food and is one of the main gods to help separate Father Sky from Mother Earth. Rongo will have two Pokemon in hand, the Skink and his ace Pokemon, the Kumara. Kumara are heavily associated with Rongo and was one of the main major food sources for the Maori. And as a root-based plant, it gets the grass and ground typing. After you have successfully defeated Rongo, he gives you the root badge and provides you with the TM Bulldoze. Once you have defeated to the gym, head on over to a house which will provide you with an old rod. Before you head over to the next route, you will be stopped by Coupe. He will ask whether or not you have been following him and challenges you to a match. In this battle, Coupe will have two Pokemon, the Kiwi and the starter Pokemon your Pokemon is weak towards. After defeating Coupe, he will walk off hoping that you two will have more matches like this in the future. Now that you have successfully defeated Coupe, Route 2 will be available to cross. Route 2 will still be based on the Waimakariri region, but instead will be based on the wetlands prior to its transformation as a farming area. Route 2 will have trainers such as Youngsters, Ninja Boys, and Parasol Ladies. During the day, you will find Pokemon such as the Pupico and the Dragonfly. Pupico are known for their dark violet plumage and have interesting social structures. The Pupico will ultimately evolve to a similar looking bird, the Takehe. The Dragonfly will be the Yamega of this series and is a water type because its Maori name translates to Water Snatcher. At night, you will find frogs and snails. The frog will be a pure ground type because the majority of the New Zealand frogs are more terrestrial than they are aquatic. The snails will be a grass and rock type, rock for its shell, and grass because, although it is typically seen as a garden snail, it actually isn't. Fishing anywhere with an old rod will always get you a magic card. However, if you choose to fish here with a good rod or a super rod, you will be able to catch a mudfish, which will essentially be the barboach of this series. We then make our way over to Route 3, which is based on Kahunangi National Park. The park is known for its old rocks, unique plants, and rare birds. In fact, some of New Zealand's oldest fossils have come from this park. During the day, the types of Pokemon you'll see are the Wood Rose, the Weta, the Nico Palm, and the Maro. The Wood Rose, or the Dactylanthus, is a parasitic flowering plant and is translated into Maori as the flower of the underworld, and therefore gets the grass and dark typing. 
Weta are unique invertebrates that have been around since the age of dinosaurs and is your typical common bug Pokemon. The Nico palm are coastal trees that can grow well over 9 meters in length and therefore gets to grass typing. Finally, the Mero are known as the wild men of Maori mythology and are known to attack with weapons such as clubs or with their sharp claws, hence the fighting type. At night, the Pokemon you'll find are kiwi, snails, frogs, bats, and worms. The bats of New Zealand are known in Maori folklore as creatures that foretell death or disaster, and therefore gets the dark and flying type. Worms will be based on the New Zealand velvet worm, which is said to be the missing link for worms and insects, and it will be a bug and ground type. Types of trainers that you'll see here are backpackers, Pokemon rangers, and bug catchers. This will also be the location where you will see Team Rocket for the first time. Towards the end of the forest, you notice that there are two people bullying a rune maniac. The grunts claim that they need the fossils that the rune maniac collected for the greater good. They inform the trainer to mind his or her own business, but of course, you intervene. After defeating the two grunts and sending them away, the Ruin Maniac will thank you by allowing you to choose one of two fossils. One will be the fossil of a feather, which will represent the New Zealand penguin. In this case, it will be based on the Crescent Penguin, or the Tawaki. The other fossil will be based on the skull of a Flesiosaur, a long-necked aquatic reptile found in the Jurassic period. Passing the end of the forest, we make our way to the next city, Nelson. Nelson is known as one of the sunniest places in New Zealand, which makes it a great place for establishments such as wineries, restaurants, and art galleries, be it traditional art, contemporary art, or Maori art. These multiple art galleries make a fantastic place for our Pokemon contest, which is exactly what our world of Nelson will feature. There will be a scene where a beautiful woman walks out of a contest hall while talking to one of the staff. She spots you and asks whether or not you're interested in Pokemon contests, to which you acknowledge. The woman will give you a tutorial of how the Pokemon contests work and provide you with a Pokeblock kit, which contains a portable berry blender and a Pokeblock case. When she leaves, you ask one of the staff who the kind person was. She will explain that the woman was none other than Hinea Huone, the founder of Pokemon contests. Hinea Huone is also known as the Earth-formed woman who was created by the god Dane, who is known as the god of forests. Now that you have your first experience with battling in a gym, meeting Team Rocket, and your first Pokemon contest, it is time to continue on to your next destination. The journey continues in the next video.